This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strong and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show who wouldn't be caught dead bullying Roy Kent's loved ones, Ryan Nelson. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I just want to give a PSA. If you see Roy Kent buying rope and red paint... <laughs> run for your life. Run home, <laughs> lock the doors, board the houses, hide everyone, go to your safe place. That's right. And go ahead and call 911. Yes, because things are not good if somebody if it's Roy Kent is buying rope. It's, it's, bad things are coming. Bad things are definitely coming if you see Roy Kent buying rope and red paint. So... Uh, if you've been listening to podcasts since we started the podcast last year, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoyed as we talk about the fifth episode of the third season of Ted Lasso titled Signs. If you are new or irregular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash the Main Attraction Podcast. You can get Patreon-only content. You can support us at a 3 a 5 a 10 or a $20 level. When you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want ad-free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get you the show ad-free. doesn't matter if it's as low as the $3 level, as high as the $20 level. All levels of being a Patreon supporter get you the show ad-free over on the Patreon app. If you can't be a patron, though, you can help the show out by writing us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can leave us a five-star rating, and if you have time, you can write us a review while you're there on Apple Podcasts. And we've been harping on this, and we'll probably harp on it quite a bit uh, more. We really would love to get some ratings. And you look, you don't even have to do the review portion if you listen to the show on Apple. If, you've, if you're listening to the show on Apple, just scroll down in your, pre- in your player while you're listening to the show. Click on the little five stars. That will help us out a whole lot. We were trying to get to 200 before the before we hit our three year our two year anniversary next year. Uh, then we got a long way to go. We got 32. So every little bit helps. So if you're listening and you haven't given us that five star rating, we would really really appreciate it if you did. So, uh, but if you would like to interact with the show though, you can send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, or just anything you would like to add to the show, we would love to hear from you over there at mainattractionpod at at gmail.com. All right, we are discussing the fifth episode of the what's supposed to be the final season of Ted Lasso. Uh, we're almost at the halfway point. Uh, it's been a good show, I think. Uh, but before we get into specifics, I'll let you give your general thoughts on what you've seen so far. First, I want to say this show is an HR nightmare. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, my God, it's just one ridiculous HR relationship <laughs> after, after another. another. Yeah, I'm really like, is. what are we doing? I don't know if the writers have ever worked in regular jobs because right. it's sort of look obvious because they don't know pi- power dot. No, they but don't. anyway, <clears throat> uh, I was thinking that there were only 10 episodes this, this season. Mm. Uh, there's 12. There's 12, right. So when I was watching this, I will say through nearly 95 percent of this episode i was like we're not even near we're not pushing towards the finale at all right we're not we're, like i couldn't figure out what this episode was doing because there's just so much stuff going on we're adding people we're bringing people in for two episodes and i was like where are we going with this i, I was really confused and then ted gave his speech at the end mm. and i thought okay that changes things a lot. Yeah, really I felt I, it, I felt better about the soccer. I felt better about where Ted is. I felt better about where everyone the team is. I still have questions about Keeley and Rebecca's storylines right. and really what we're doing with those. Uh, but um, but the soccer portion of it, uh, I felt so much better. I will say we have opened a lot of storylines that we haven't gone back to. Sam's restaurant, yeah, Sam's restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colin, yeah, we have, they haven't talked and, about him yet. And, you know, and we're opening all the storylines, and we're not going anywhere near them. Now, granted, this show has been known to let stuff lie and then mm-hmm. you know come back to it, but feels like we have a lot to go with seven seven episodes. A yeah. lot. Yeah, it, it does feel like we have a lot to go. I will say this: I think some of this stuff is just was supposed to always be periphery. I think the, 
I think the Sam restaurant stuff, I think that was always just to be kind of a periphery thing. I don't think but that he was, was such a huge character last year. And well, at the well, end yeah, of the first I, season, I, I don't he's think, barely I don't, in this. I don't think he isn't going to be. I don't think he's periphery. I think right, just right. that that whole restaurant part of it. I think that's just kind of a side thing that they were just yeah. they were just yeah. using to kind of put the pull the plot forward a little bit for for Rebecca and uh, for a few other characters there in that first episode. I don't think the the restaurant part of it is supposed to be a a significant portion. Now, I do agree that Sam has not been as as involved in this this season as much as he was last season. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do anything about that, but he's... I, gr- I feel like with Zava leaving, that's going to open up the, the team having a bigger part. Well, let, let's get into that in just a second. Uh, but just my over general thoughts. One of the things... I thought this was a really good episode, but it's an episode that I don't really know how to describe it because I don't want to say I hate it, but just because it's a type of episode that when you're because everybody in this in this episode, most everybody you, is feeling stressed, they're feeling pressure, they're right. feeling and very you, anxious. Yeah, a lot anxiety, of anxiety, a lot of anxiety in this episode. And lowest when, rated besides Beards Night Out. This is the, these two are the lowest rated in these series. And I can see that, but like I said, I, I still, I think it's a, I think it's a test. I actually think that's a testament to how well this, this episode actually accomplishes mm-hmm. what they want to do. Because like I said, it's not my favorite episode. It's, it's a, it's probably though really one of the most important episodes because they are putting right. so much pressure on people. It's not always that much fun to watch them go through this, but it's a testament to how well it's done because when you put as much anxiety inside an episode as they do in this, if you're not pulling off what you're set out to do, your mm-hmm. audience won't feel that as well, and they'll just be kind of whatever. I felt anxious watching this, and that's like oh, I said, yeah. that is just kind of a testament to me about what how well they do this show and how well it works because. Like I said, it wasn't a fun watch, but it was a really good episode. Like I said, it's hard to really describe. Yeah. It is, and like at the end when Ted's speeches speech happens, you feel so much better. Yes, you you're do. like, mm. all right, I know where we're going with this. I feel good. You know, I will say the Nate parts made me feel good because yeah. he is c- really coming around. Yes, he is. Like this is old Nate. You feel good about him. Uh, I would. There was something else. You know, the Roy Kent. <laughs> Wrote bully speech was one of the funniest things we've seen in the show. It is, but you know, but but like you said, besides that, um, it was there was a lot of anxiety for you know, and poor Rebecca is still hurting. Yes, yeah, she is. She's still very much hurting. And so let's just kind of talk about the, via the characters this week because there right. is there's quite a bit going on, and I think that's the best way to talk about this. So let's start with. I guess let's start with Zava real quick because he came okay. in. He's basically came in in episode two. Correct me if I'm wrong. That sounds right. And we last the last time I guess we'll see him. Well, maybe he'll show up again. I don't know if maybe uh, for another team or whatever. I'm going to make a prediction on Zava. What's that? You want me to do it now or later? Go ahead, do it now. Zava's going to end up on West Ham, and and Nate is going to be back at Richmond, and he's going to be the one who just figures out how to beat Zava at West Ham. That could be. I, I could see something like that happening. The only thing here's why I don't know. I don't know how Premier League like contracts and yeah, stuff like this, this works. This, so. this show's, this well, show's not going to go by the rules. I have a hard time. That's when I started. That's when I started having a no, hard time I'm with, with you. it. <laughs> because yeah. in reality, there's no way a team would let a uh, retired player, you know, go. It's under back. contract or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be like if Tom Brady like left the first game of you know with the Patriots right. and ended up with the you know with tampa bay that that didn't happen right exactly so anyway let's uh, so he shows up for basically three or four episodes and Mm -hmm. he was fantastic yes he was fantastic i will say this i was he was a very different character than at least for what i like Mm -hmm. it's very quite possible that we'll see him again but for let's just assume that we that he won't be back or at least he won't be back with richmond he was very different than what I expected because, man, I, you know, they were describing as diva and all this type of stuff. And I, I can see that to a certain extent. And he does have a detrimental effect on the team, but it's not the way that I anticipated. The way I anticipated was I, I, expect, I expect him to cause a lot of division in the locker room, to get under people's skin because he had to require all these this special treatment and all this type of stuff. That's not what he does. The, the team loves him. The team absolutely adores him. Except for Jamie. Him, except for Jamie. Jamie is the only person's skin he got under. Right. So, 
and they were winning ball. They were winning ball games for a mm-hmm. while, and until we get to, and that's where this episode picks up. After the West Ham game, the team is basically falling apart. They've gone like seven straight games without a win. They do have some draws in there. They're just they don't yeah. have any wins. Um, they, like I said, I don't remember how many games it was, but I think it's, they said something like seven. But I think it was three losses and four draws. Okay, because so, we saw Beard write it up. It, the first line is seven straight defeats, is what they called it. Okay. But, but it really wasn't defeats. Uh, well, anyway, regardless, like I said, so he obviously some of the magic's kind of worn off here, and that's kind yeah. of where the, the 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 team is. They're in a bit of a crisis mode at this point. And Zava, like I said, he is he has been just an interesting character. He's been one of the most fun characters to watch. I love the, mm-hmm. I love what he brought to this season so far. Um, I thought that he brought a just a bit of excitement just seeing the team get excited brought some excitement and just in into the show as well uh but you know it, it kind of all comes crashing down here at the end because now he has done kind of what a lot of people expect that he just retires on a whim doesn't show up for their g- game against man city and next thing we know you know the team is kind of this is why it was a detri- this was the, always the problem is right. they relied so heavily on zava to win these games now they don't have him anymore how are they going to do it like i said i thought his character was really interesting i liked him being on here i hope they have some other kind of role for him uh going forward because i, I like I said he was a nice addition to the show yeah and let's shout out maximilian ozinski because i thought yeah. he w- he was really good and like you said who would have thought like the part about how much he was in love with his wife right oh no mm-hmm. that was yeah. that was which, really interesting huh? yeah which come to find out in real life he's married to miss casey from from uh severance oh really That's his wife yeah so okay i can see why he's so in love with her <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that too <laughs> but, but, like you just never knew like you said everything you thought he was going to be he was totally different then. He was totally so, different. He was still. A, I, I like that. He was still a divisive force because they were. He was still a, uh, overall. He's still a bit of an issue on the team just because, like we yeah. said, he they relied so heavily on him that they weren't really playing like an actual team themselves. And that was that was an issue for them, and it's going to. They now have to figure out how to win without him. Um, we'll talk more about how that might happen with actual Ted here in just a second. So. Um, Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Roy and Jamie this episode because I think they're kind of linked as well. Um, yeah, Roy obviously <laughs> we get the great speech after the great intimidation speech after they find out that Ted's son has. Well, we assumed at the, at the beginning that Ted's son was getting bullied, and they're going through these ways on how to deal with it. And Roy says at first, you know, you have to ignore a bully. And they're like, they kind of look at him like that's kind of a weird thing to do. <laughs> and then he goes into that speech about getting a rope, a really heavy yeah. rope, dipping it in paint. Just absolutely hilarious. Then you got to come at 4 a.m. You got to come at 4 a.m. That's the least suspect. And then, of course, Beard says, correct. I love that little line that he throws in there with that. Yeah. Uh, but I love the, and this is the, the, the brilliance of Brett Goldstein. It was when, like, he kind of just slowed down his speech. He's like, and then you pull back and you beat them and mercifully <laughs> and you laugh at them, you know, because even, like, everyone's just like, oh. <gasps> And, and did you notice Trek Krem dropped his rainbow flag yes, mm-hmm. uh, mug? So that could be something with Colin. That yeah, it could be. Kind of looked at, yeah, yeah, because he he dropped that mug, and it is a rainbow. It is a, it does have a rainbow, and it's a Snoopy rainbow from what we have uh, yeah. found out. So, uh, but like I said, uh, that was just an amazing part of the a part of of the show. And one of the things that I think that, that we're going to have to get from from Roy because. The one thing that the team is missing with with Nate being gone, they don't have a a, a schematic person. They don't have a guy mm-hmm. who can figure out schemes and who can figure out because Roy was a great player, but he didn't draw up schemes. He he can coach him and he can train Jamie. But this is, I think, where he's going to have to grow as a coach because that's not what Ted does. It's not what Beard does. That's no. not why they're – I mean, look, they were both given the job so they could fail originally. So let's just – I mean, they're already right. a little bit – you know, handcuffed in that regard, but they've got to have somebody who understands soccer to a greater degree. And Roy does. He's a great, he was a great player. He has to learn how to scheme against other teams. Cause basically at the beginning of this thing, he's saying, you know, if we play four, four, two, we're effed. If we play the one, five, four, we're effed. If we play something else, we're effed. I mean, so he's got to come up with something. This is what they need from him on the team. And so like I said, this is what I want to see next for him and his growth as a character. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, 
and we get to see at the very end him and Jamie yes. are still training at 4 a.m. They're still training for it. But also another thing that's very interesting, when Ted is giving his speech there at the end and he says something about, you know, we're a team or I don't remember what part. Roy looks at Jamie at one point and mm-hmm. nods at him and Jamie nods yeah. back. So, like I said, there is there is an undeniable and great chemistry between those two yep. those two actors and what those two are doing on screen and when they are on screen together is just absolutely phenomenal like i said with the way they have grown both as characters and as players yeah. coach from season one to this season is just remarkable to me because it's, it, it's one of the best things of the show it really sure. is it truly is because if you had told me in season one that Jamie Tart would be one of my favorite characters on this show, I, I would have laughed at you because that was no way that would the case. I mean, he's just been Dunst, Phil Dunster and Brett Goldstein are yeah. just magical on screen. I love they what they really do. Are. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and go to Ted since he's the, the main person. Ted, Ted has been basically since season two. He's been he's had these moments and he said goes into these funks and it takes him a while to come out of them and he's been in a funk basically ever since his son since episode one since his son left to go back home yeah and he just keeps having when you start to, every time you start to think he's coming out of it something else happens he finds out that michelle is in a relationship with their former marriage counselor uh he, you know he finds that out he, he's got also he's got uh, rebecca who for the first time since he's been the coach is actually on him about winning, uh, and yeah. that hasn't been the case. So, Sassy makes him realize he's a mess. Yeah, Sassy makes him realize he's a mess. That's another good point. So, like I said, he has all these things that he's in the funk. And, look, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, we all deal with this. We all have things that we're dealing with. We all have issues that we're, that we're working through. The problem is, like, you and I, you know, we don't go in front of, you know, the entire world. And they don't right. see us when we're not at our best at our jobs. Yeah. So. yeah. We all have we all have moments where we're not performing at our best at, at the workplace. But like I said, for Ted, who is already not a soccer coach, yeah, it's even worse. So uh, I thought it was really interesting. I really love the way that he just kind of snaps back into it there at the end he with really the sign does. when the sign tears. Because I've been saying for weeks now he's checked out, but you could he really was checked out. Yeah, he was a different person giving that speech and this is just the brilliance of jason sudeikis and i wonder how much of that's improv of him or him actually you know word for word right, right. you know reading reading that speech because man i was fired up listening to it i watched it twice and it, it was really good it was an all-timer yeah it's it, it's an absolutely amazing speech and here's the deal you and I both know, and anybody who follows sports knows that you know speech giving is a part of coaching. It's not the most important oh, yeah. part. It's not the most critical part. But in a show about sports, and when the show is focused on a coach, this is where you can really show how good of a coach a person, how good of a coach a coach is supposed to be, is when they give their speeches. And this but is you, you say that though, it's pretty high on the list. If you can't fire your team, oh, team yeah, up and keep them motivated, yeah. I mean, but the more important part is you know getting the players and getting right, the right, game right. playing all that type of stuff. So, but it's like I said, it is an important part. It's just not. I don't think it's the most important part. Uh, but when he gives this speech, it is. You feel every you feel kind of what you see on the team's faces when mm-hmm. they, when he's giving this speech and it's what they've needed and uh, like you know Sam especially like he you see it really he has on him such a smile on a face yeah. and it's like I said you're starting to see what you know it's because he's giving a speech about the believe sign and what it means to actually believe and he starts actually tearing the sign up in front of them the rest of the, he's like you know it's just a sign it's it believe isn't about what's written on the poster board hung up on a wall it's about what's in your head it's yeah. about what's in your heart and you know he's having to convince them the problem was they relied too much on what was on the poster board and it was a kind of like a good luck charm they weren't actually they weren't actually believing themselves and that was the problem he yeah. wasn't believing in himself either and this seems to have kind of kicked it kicked him back into another gear and like i said i, I can't wait to see what he does for the rest of the season me too, man. And when he talks about believing in one another and, and that's the fundamental to be to love, this is a speech you could see being shown on jumbotrons at sports. Right. Uh, like, you know, going into before the game or a fourth quarter. I would not be shocked about that. It was that good. Yeah, it really was. It was, it was a really, really good speech. And, you know, 
Uh, well, let's, I'll tell you what. We'll save this for Rebecca. So we'll talk. Let's talk about Rebecca real quick. All right, Rebecca is going through. She has been going through mm. quite a bit since the beginning of this season, and she continues to go through quite a bit. In this episode, she th- we start off the episode with her seeing her ex from I don't know how many years ago it was, but it was an uh, one of her exes who's who's just kind of a dweeb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he, well, he didn't have the the magic. He didn't he didn't make her feel alive. It's not what Roy Kent said. You know, yeah. you, you deserve better. Right, exactly. And so he he's he comes and he's with his uh, I guess his wife I don't remember if it was wife or it's fiance, fiance, fiance Judy right. Darling I think was her name yes Judy Darling was her name that was because I was like that's an interesting name to say the least yeah, but, uh, that's how I remembered it uh, but they're sitting there talking in the coffee shop and you know I don't th- here's the thing I don't think that she really wanted to be back with him I don't I don't no, think she wanted no. to be back with him but the idea it's this is she's basically dealing with her past throughout the entire entirety of this episode she's dealing with her past with sam she's dealing with her past with this guy that she meets back up in in this coffee shop with she's dealing with her past throughout the season with uh rupert because you know she couldn't have a child with him and she's also remembering all this stuff from the psychic that the psychic was telling her you know and then higgins uh comes in and you know, rightfully so, discusses whether or not there needs to be a change of manager yeah. because it might not be. Like I said, he didn't enjoy that conversation. She didn't want to have anything to do with that conversation. But it was still at this at this point in time, it's a legitimate concern. I mean, and look, she has that's nothing. a big move. That's a big moment for Higgins to get the yeah. the get the, the uh, cojones to right. do that. Yeah, it, it is. It's a big moment for him, but also it's. A bit of you know this is kind of a, a you know the team out winning is kind of a a problem of your own making because you yeah. hire Ted in to lose to specifically lose to begin with yeah. so it's it's a little bit you know it'd be hard to fire somebody for losing when they that's what you actually hired them to do so uh, it's, like I said it's a bit of a weird situation all, all around but. Uh, so she eventually decides to go see a doctor. And let me just tell you, I, I would love a doctor who says, you don't have to worry about filling all that stuff out. I have to fill out that I mean, crap every single time. <laughs> seriously, this is, this is not happening in the United States. No, it is not. It's not happening over here at all. So uh, she goes in and she starts talking to the doctor. And, you know, he says, because she asks, you know, is it am I too late? Am I too old? And he, he's like, no, I I've, I've deal with people your age and people older uh, who want to have kids. Uh, it is definitely possible. You know, we'll do some tests. We'll do some imaging work. We'll do all this type of stuff. And, you know, gives her, you know, at least a little bit of confidence about it and gives her some support on it. Who knows what what actually happens because he, the doctor texts her in right before the match starts and says, we'll talk after the match. What? What kind I know. Of doctor would do that. <laughs> I know you would. You would. They wouldn't do that. What, what a psycho! They wouldn't do that. They. They'd have. I mean, uh, maybe these two are just really know each other really well, and uh, yeah. I don't know. But uh, so he leaves them. He, he says we'll talk after the match, and he delivers some news. I I couldn't tell if it was good news or bad news. I think bad news. See, but this. I, well, this is where this show normally shows you the call. Right. They do so many calls on FaceTime or so many calls where you can hear unless they're misdirecting you. Right. This call and the call that Nate makes where he's asking for the date, right. they don't do where you can hear the call. And Nate calls his mother. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk so, about that in a second. <laughs> so they make it look like she's getting bad news, but I'm not convinced of that. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced of it either because, like I said, you, even with what she says, you can't tell if – can't tell anything if it was what she wanted to hear or right. not so like i said i don't really know where they're going with that, with that in general but uh like i said she is still working through a lot of issues she's still got a lot of issues she has to work with she's like i said that the psychic the meeting with the psychic just seems to have a hold over her this yeah. season and i don't know when that's going to when she's going to be able to shake herself free of it and the other thing i noticed keely was not there for her multiple times when she needed her right and that's and she, and they make an emphasis of pointing out she didn't know who to put for an emergency contact. Right, uh, that was a good point as well. They, they, she had no idea who to put. She didn't know who to put a friend, a family member. She didn't know, know who to put. But since you brought up Keely, let's go ahead and talk about her. So Keely is having uh, her own issues, but she's actually, she, you, she is still having issues about the way that she and Roy left each other, yeah. and it continues to weigh on her because 
she seems to be in a pretty good spot professionally because it opens up with with Keely and Jack and I can't remember the name of the CFO. Barbara. Was, Barbara, thank you. Uh, they're having how can me, you forget that? I know. I don't know how to forget her. She <laughs> honestly might be the best character. I know. She's, this she's hilarious. I, I was not really yeah. expecting no one to expect for her, but she's been spectacular this, thank this you, season. Katie Wicks is Barbara. You've been fantastic. She has been. She's been absolutely fantastic. So they're having this meeting and uh, they're basically going through everything and we find out the true what shandy really actually is uh shandy yeah. is vindictive she is she's great if you're on good terms with her but if you're not on good terms with her look out because things are not going yeah. to end well for you yeah i love uh shandy's jerry Maguire moment where she gets up and says who's with me <laughs> nobody uh, well was it dave was that his name I think it's dave, dave or dan what? i can't remember which one it is yeah, yeah he wanted to go when there was double rays and the massages but right she didn't want it Right, <laughs> and, I, and I love how Barbara was like, "There is no way I would ever join you." That was right. that was just hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that was great. But as I said, we, so we get find out just a little bit about Shandy because uh, she comes in and storms in on their meeting, and this is when Jack tells her, "You got to fire." Her. And like I said, I love the way that it starts because it sounds like Jack is firing her, and she and yeah. Keely's like, "What? What are I doing?" And she's like, "No, no, that's for what you say to her when when you fire her." And she's like, "Oh, okay. Well, that makes more sense." So. Uh, like I said, then they get into a little bit later in the episode. They're getting ready to go to the game because uh, she she offers Barbara and Jack a, a ticket to to go see Richmond play in their game against Man City. And when they're getting ready to leave, they smell something, and it turns out Shandy has a a, a lamb placed in the conference room, and it has crapped all over uh, the place. And look, lambs they do stink. I don't know if you've ever well, smelled we, a lamb. And, and, well, they mentioned that in what the, the second episode. Remember, this was on the uh, video shoot, the oh, commercial right. shoot. That was the lamb was there. Oh, that's where right. she got yeah, the idea. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I forget about that. So they're, they have all this lamb crap everywhere, and they've got, they've got to clean it. They've got to try to get the smell out. Uh, and so this means that they don't end up going to the game. Jack and Keely end up having this conversation uh, and it leads to the two of them kissing and obviously something else after that we don't actually see but which they used the blinds that the creepy boss who got fired was using yes, that's to, right. to, for privacy for privacy that's mm-hmm. a little gross guys yeah, that's a little gross <laughs> yeah also you how would you be able to stay in that office drinking and making out with that lamb food well, smell? I maybe, mean, my God. Maybe if you're really, really drunk, maybe that's maybe you don't care anymore. Has, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we gotta have the we gotta have the Jack conversation. Yeah. Okay. Well, well that could be any things. What? Are you, what are, where are you going with that? So, that could, like I said, that could be a lot of things. What, what's she up to? Because now I'm starting to think she might be. Her whole thing was to hook up with which with uh, Keely to over because like when Keely mentions that she wants to be a boutique uh, a boutique PR firm mm, right like Barbara's like well that's not what Jack wants Jack has always told me to hire all these people to make and Jack's like no 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 I agree with Keely mm. and then everything about this I don't know I'm I'm getting bad vibes from Jack that there could be leading more this whole relationship is not good yeah the, let's just talk let's just start there i mean we talked about we talked about this with with uh rebecca and with sam how you can't do that you can't have the owner yeah. of the team and a player right. getting in a relationship together and it I, I i thought for a second there at the beginning of the first episode or second episode that they were going to kind of go down that road again but thankfully they have not yeah. you can't do this either you can't have your the, no. the head of the investment firm that is basically bankrolling your company you can't have them you know, get in a relationship with the CEO of the company. You, you can't do that. Like I said, this is like you said earlier at the beginning. This is an HR. This is an HR person's yes. nightmare of a show because there are so many things that just shouldn't happen. I mean, relationship wise, right? Uh, and you can't. You know, it doesn't matter if it's gay, straight, whatever. Yeah, doesn't matter. It, you can't have this happening. So there's that problem to go with to start with. I don't know. <sighs> I can kind of see what you're saying that maybe this is she the reason that she was doing this to begin with is just so that she could, you know, meet her and hook up with her. Right. I, I don't know. That's a good question. And before someone says something, Keely mentioned 
multiple times oh, in the yeah. first mm-hmm. season she was bisexual. Yeah, she did. So if you uh, haven't, yeah, yeah. if you don't remember, like she, the very first thing that she says when she meets Rebecca, I think, is like dipping back into the lady pool when she right, meets her right, something right. like that. Yes, exactly what she said. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, there's there's that as well, and I, I I don't know where they're going with it. I don't know how. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a fan because. Give us what we want. We want her and Roy back together. And I think that's now. Granted, this could be the rebound instead of her going to Jamie. So right. that's, I guess, good. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that this will be something that I agree they pursue. I really don't. I think it'll just be you know, just a one-time thing. And I could, I could be wrong, but I just feel kind of feel that way. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know. My, my my villain sense on Jack is now, and also Jack is very. She's very nice. Mm. She's like very funny. Just everything about her se- seems good. Right. I, that my villain villain tingles her up. <laughs> Your villain tingles like that. So, uh, all right. So let's talk about Nate because we are finally getting yeah. a little bit. We're starting to see the Nate that everyone kind of fell in love with in the first season. Yeah. Uh, it starts off with Nate for this episode. He is in his office, and I guess his secretary or whatever comes in and gives him the number of the of the model that he took to that he was basically hooked up with by rupert at the bar after the west ham and anastasia anastasia thank you uh so he gives her a number because and you know he says you know she says he she said that she was a little surprised that anastasia was a little surprised that nate didn't ask for it that night he's like well i didn't want to look too forward to which is a which is classic yeah. nate stuff he wouldn't didn't well, he would never want to right. seem too forward uh, and well, I love the fact that he he looks at the number, he calls, and you think he's calling Anastasia, and it turns out he's calling his mom. That was just absolutely wonderful. I that love was that. really funny. I love that scene too. Yeah, it was just absolutely fantastic. But the only other scene that we get, at least if I remember correctly, the only other scene that we get from from Nate is a scene where he does take Anastasia to the little Greek restaurant that is so beloved by him and his family. Yeah. And Anastasia. Taste of Athens. Yeah, is that, is that the name of it? Taste of Athens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just love this because it just shows how he is he's doing something because really the reason he keeps going back to this restaurant well, is a, is a, a, a restaurant it's a favorite restaurant of his family but he has something for Jade who is the the right. receptionist there he's got he's got a little thing for her. and you know I love the fact that he takes her that he takes Anastasia there because it just shows that it doesn't matter how beautiful Anastasia is it doesn't matter how great of a model she is or how uh, just you know, otherworldly her looks may be. That's not who Nate is. He's not right. going to be the person because Anastasia wants to be seen. She wants to be. She's a, she's yeah. a supermodel. She wants people to see her. And and this is a quaint, small little restaurant, and it's doing nothing for her. And like it's something yeah. that's really important to him, but has no meaning to her. And, and, and he gives that great line about how much this place means to him and mm. his family and she's she's on her phone the and entire time it. <laughs> yeah that, that he's giving anastasia out. sucks yeah she does she does suck uh but like i said so i love this and mm-hmm. then jade comes over after anastasia leaves and they finally kind of get a little thing going because jade has yeah. been jade has i haven't really been able to read jade it, i felt I, like no i know i felt the same way yeah I, I wasn't really sure if she liked him or if she was annoyed by him. So it was nice to see that she sits down to have dinner with him after Anastasia leaves. And so maybe there's something between the two of them. But it was, You know what I think it was? What's that? So before Nate was so nervous, like when he was talking to her, and like she needs a guy with some confidence. Right. And then this time he was confident. And when Anastasia was bad-mouthing the restaurant – he took up for the place. Yeah, yeah. The old Nate would have bad mouthed the place too and been like, Yeah, this place does suck. I don't know why I picked this. But no, he was like the baklava Devon. Right. Wait till you taste it. Like he mentioned how much he loved this place. That's that was real growth from Nate. That that's why we're showing how much this character has changed. Right. Yeah, it is. He's shown quite a bit that he's he's going back to who he he's going back to the sweet person that we know he was, but also a little bit more confident version of that sweet person that we knew yeah. back at the beginning. So, I want to see what I think he'll be back to the guy that we were accustomed to I before so. the end of the season is over. I really do believe yeah, that. So. I, I may. I'm telling you, him and Rupert are going to get into it and he's going to be back on richmond at the end of the season i hope so i, I really hope so so yeah oh i forgot to we forgot have we seen the last of shandy i think so i, I just don't see her bringing yeah, the two. I, I thought she brought what she needed to for while she was here but i don't see her bringing yeah, much else 
Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, for a while, I thought she could end up at West Ham, but I don't know. She wasn't very good at her job, so probably yeah. not. I, I, we've probably seen the rest. Yeah, the, might, the last of her. The, the only way that she might come back is if, like, like you mentioned, if she ends up going to some West Ham and doing PR yeah. for them. That's the only way I could see her coming back. So, uh, the only other thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about Roy, uh, I love when he was like getting the team psyched up he's like sitting there like kill him rough him up and he yeah. gets the same and shakes his hand and outclass him man yes <laughs> that was fantastic that was i love that, that. oh it's just fantastic i love i love roy kent i love toheeb jamo yeah. i guess is how you pronounce his name uh, yeah. i do want to see more from from sam i will say that this, i do too. i would like to see a lot more from him he's been a really good character for the first two seasons and He's been basically just a side character this uh, this season. Yeah, he really has. So now Zava is gone. So it's going to open yeah. up room for mm-hmm. the other people on the team, the other people in the cast to be able to shine a little bit more. So, like I said, I could see him taking a bigger role. I, th- I think Sam, Isaac, Danny, and and Colin are about to have a much bigger part. Yeah, I, I think they are too. And I'll be interested to see how they handle some of the stuff. Like I said, still one. Of the, they still have not addressed. Colin being seen by uh, yeah. Trent Graham, they haven't addressed that yet. They they've got to do that at some point because that it just seemed like too big of a moment. The way that he will, stops, looks at them kissing outside the bar, and then just keeps on going. Like I said, they've right. got to do something with that. Other than that, but other than that, I'm yeah. not really sure how they're going to handle that. So, uh, I think that kind of takes care of us for this. I got week. I got two more things. Okay, go ahead. Gina Krishan dated oh, yeah. both Beard and Roy Kent. That yes. was interesting. Yeah, and no. they don't know it. Uh, they don't know that you're right. They yeah, don't know it. Beard mentioned Gina Krishan and Roy looked over like what? Right. So that was that was interesting. <laughs> uh, also, what do you think about the scene where uh, Ted and Rebecca walk by each other? Then they they start talking, apologize, and they both have a connection about what they were previously yeah. doing. That's a good question because I don't know. To be honest with you, I saw that I that was and like there was like a musical cue as well in mm-hmm. there as well. So like I said, they're they're trying to show something happened between the two of them, and I I, I don't know what the the Ted Rebecca Hive think that's like huge, but you know I just I don't, I don't know I, I just can't see them getting together. I can't see it either. I, I'll be real honest with you. I don't I don't see them getting together at all. I yeah, yeah. I don't know that I see Ted getting together with anyone because I don't think that's what the show is about. To be perfectly honest, yeah, I agree. So, I like I don't know. I'm not sure what that was about either. It's a good question though. So, all right, uh, that take care of us for this week. I think so. All right, let's get to our weekly awards then. All right, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, when we are covering a season of a television show, we'd like to do three weekly awards. Up first is our Tyrion Lannister, and I'll be real honest with you, I'm still trying to figure this one out. So who's you going with? I'm going with Juno Temple, because we haven't picked her yet. Okay, and, that's a good one, you yeah. Know, you know, she's really good as, 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 as Keely, Keely mm-hmm. and, and has a really tough role, you know? Yeah, she to does. Play, to be this ditzy person who's, you know, known for being famous, and then really is very smart and has a lot to her, and I thought this was another episode where she, you know, got to really show her skills, so I, I really like Juno Temple in this role. Yeah, I, I'll go with her as well, because like I said, I was having a hard time figuring out who was like the MVP of the overall show there? Because there's a lot of good performances yeah. in this in this episode, and uh, it was a, it was hard to figure out. So I'll, I'll I'll go with you on that one. All right, the Agatha all along the best scene of the week. What'd you go with? It's got to be Ted's speech at the end. Yeah, it is. It's definitely that. The uh, runner up is is Brett's Goldstein's uh, threatening mon- well, uh, little speech. That's from- that that may be mentioned in a second. <laughs> well, yeah, it is going to be mentioned in a second. So we're I think we're both we're both going with that. The if you come with the king, you best not miss your best line. It is uh, Roy Kent's uh, bu- What to Do with Bullies. Yeah, I, know. I, I did not write all of it down. There's no way yeah. I was going to get the whole thing down. But, yeah, that was just amazing. It was just a well, fantastic line. It's fantastic. Second it's place, as always, goes to Coach Beard with Man City. I can't <laughs> believe our white well has the same name as the strip club I danced at dance college. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome as well. Oh, uh, my God. Great. Coach Beard, man, uh, always has some. Oh, I forgot one other thing. They There were... Simple nods to three movies. Uh, Anastasia leaves with Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, yes. meeting a bunch of models. Zoolander. Just like on Zoolander, yeah. we had Trent Cram dropping his mug like on The Usual Suspects. Like yeah. It was mm-hmm. very slow motion. And then uh, we had uh, Shandy doing her Jerry Maguire speech. Yeah, doing her Jerry Maguire speech. So there, was, there was a good. I, I didn't even think yeah. about the one from Usual Suspects. I'm glad you mentioned that one because that one, I didn't catch that one. So. 
All right. Uh, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we have a five-tier rating system. At the top of our list is Game of Thrones. Beneath Game of Thrones is Lost. Middle of the Road for us is Friends. Beneath Friends is a Full House. And Bottom of the Barrel is a Baywatch. What are you giving this... Well, Ted Lasso in general, what are you giving Ted Lasso after uh, five episodes into the third season? I'm still sticking with the loss. I mean, I'm sorry, with the uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, don't do me wrong, Ted Lasso. I'm, I'm, you know, I went up to Game of Thrones. I, I still feel good about it, but let's let's give me keep me going, Ted. Yeah, look, you, you got me on the train. Yeah, and I, I'm still at the Game of Thrones as well. Like I said, I, this wasn't a fun sh- episode to watch, but I think yeah. it's a really important episode. I think it did a lot in terms of. Just the overall story for all the characters. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's a critical portion of the of the shows where the show is at in terms of just its overall arc in terms of wrapping up at the end of the season. I think it's a really important episode. It wasn't the most fun watched because everybody was so right. there was so much anxiety in it. But nevertheless, I thought it was re- it was really well done, and that was the more important thing. So, all right. Uh, before we go, we do like to do some things that we're looking forward to, some things that we've uh, seen that got us excited. So, what are some things you're looking forward to? Uh, last season of Barry starts tonight. Oh, that's right. On that's HBO tonight. comes on after Succession. So, yeah, two episodes. Looking forward to that. Marvelous Miss Maisel's final season uh, dropped right, yeah. this weekend. Yeah. So, at some point, I'll watch that. Uh, <laughs> not not sure when. And uh, the Mandalorian season finale is this week. Yeah, I've got a few of them in there as well. Uh, Mandalorian season finale. Speaking of which, I'm glad you said that because I just want to let everybody know we are going to take a little bit of a break from Ted Lasso because we do have the Mando season finale coming up. Uh, we'll do a mid-season check-in next week on – I'm sorry, in two weeks on – um, Yellow, Yellow Jackets, Jackets, and then Game of the Ga- uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three comes out. I expect that. Uh, look, I know people have been complaining about Marvel. I don't think this one's going to. I think this one's going to bang. I really do. Uh, so yeah. uh, we'll we'll be covering that as well. So we'll we'll probably come back to Ted Lasso here in a few weeks. But for right now, we're we're going to try to cover some of the other stuff that we've been missing uh, to fill in fill in the gaps here a little bit. So uh, so that is one thing I'm looking forward to. The School Spirits finale season finale. Uh, came out on Paramount this past week. I have not had a chance to watch it, so that I'm looking forward to watching it. I do want to see how it pans out. It's been a really good show up until this point. Uh, so that's one thing I'm looking forward to. And I'm, one thing I'm also looking forward to, we got our first trailer for The Marvels. I thought it looked really good. I thought it oh, looked I did not, I did not see it. I yeah, it, see it, it looks like... Look, I loved... I did, I'm, I'm going to say I loved I really enjoyed the first uh, Captain Marvel movie. I thought it was good. I know yeah, a lot of people... I did too, man. I, I, I don't I, get the hate for it. I really don't. I don't either. Yeah, I think Brie Larson is really good in that role. Yeah, I think she is too. I thought she was really good. I, th- I love seeing Samuel L. Jackson because he gets a bigger part in, yeah. that, in that film and he'll have a bigger part in this one as well. Uh, people really hate that movie. Some people think it's the worst one. I know. I, I don't. I, like I said, I don't. I don't understand it. So yeah, I, I'm looking. Either. I'm looking forward to it. It comes out in November. The first trailer of it looks. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It looks like you know you got three really good personalities in the lead there with uh, Tiana. Is it Tiana Harris? Is that her name? Who plays Monica Rambo? I think it's her name. Uh, Kamala yeah, Khan. I can't, uh, I can't remember. Who, yeah. I can't remember the girl. Uh, I can't remember the girl's name. Plus Kamala Khan, but uh, then obviously Brie Larson as uh, Captain Marvel herself. So they'll, they'll be fun to watch. Uh, I'm not really sure who the villain is. They show her briefly. But I'm not really sure who the villain's going to be. But like I said, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see it. So uh, I think that is all that I have. Uh, anything else you got? You want to add before we head off? Appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I would echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.